Hello and welcome everybody to my video. This is a new day and let's begin a new topic. It is the sound machine that we are going to do. It is the topic as you all know for the class 12 ISC and uh, this question, uh, the, the questions from the sound machine are very much important for your semester 2. You know that uh, this is there, this is included in your semester 2 exam and you also know the pattern for your question paper. First you get the MCQ type and that includes questions from everywhere, from uh, tempest, from stories, from poems everywhere. And also then we move to the long answer type question, which includes question, which is of four marks. So these are questions which I have found in many other, many different schools from different places in different uh, uh, states. And as uh, it is also, uh, I, I believe it is one of the most important topic and also very uh, many important questions are from here. We will discuss this today and I hope you like my video. If you do like it, hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel. We are 7000 people over here trying to do something better, trying to score more marks. Please, if you are not yet a subscriber, subscribe to my channel and be a family. Thank you so much. Let's begin. Model test paper 2, semester 2 uh, and this is these are the multiple choice questions as, along with the long answer type questions that we are going to do. ISC 2021 to 22. Let's begin the questions. First one is the MCQ. So question number 1. When did Klossner test his machine first? Is it morning? Is it early morning? Is it night? Or is it evening? As we all know, it is obviously evening because just after evening the late evening came there was dark everywhere and he moved inside next morning he was there to test his instrument again so first one was evening coming to the next question question number two which word does not suit Klossner? is it dreamy and distracted is it nervous is it pale or none of the above uh, does not suit is given dreamy and distracted is obviously a point Nervous is obviously another point and pale is also another point. So option number D, none of the above. Next question, question number three. The vibrations which are inaudible to human ear is imagined by Klossner as what? These are sounds? No, sounds that is uh, something that everybody will say. High pitched uh, sounds? No, that is a scientific note. Uh, noise? No, but notes. Yes, according to him, when everybody thinks that oh, there are so much sound everywhere, this is just a noise. It was notes for him because he thought there is a music created somewhere. Remember? Next, question number four. What proof did Klossner's last instrument provide? Is it existence of sounds? Is it existence of many odd inaudible sounds? Is it inaudible sounds could be audible? Is it dogs can hear sounds that are inaudible to us? So what proof did Klossner's last instrument provide? Existence of sounds? No, not just sounds. Existence of many odd inaudible sounds. Those that human ear cannot hear. Alright, so option number B. Question number 5. Why did Dr. Scott visit Klossner's house one evening? Klossner called? No. Urgent call by Klossner? Uh, no. It is evening given, not the next morning. Next morning he called. Number C. To see the coffin box made by Klossner? No, he did not know that there is a coffin box. Number D. To check if Klossner was still suffering from the throat problem. Yes, this is correct. He actually wanted to check whether Klossner was still suffering from the throat problem or not. Coming to the next question, question number six. Why was Dr. Scott called the second time? Why was he called? He was called the second time also. Remember the next morning to meet Klossner, his friend. This is obvious, but says there is something more. Not for just meeting him, isn't it? To check Klossner's health, no, that was the first time. C. To tend the gash on the tree made by his ex for dinner. Not for dinner. Why, why uh, early morning he will call for dinner, isn't it? So option C. His main motto was to tend the tree made by his ex. Tend the gash of the tree made by his ex. This is also completely not correct. But you see, he wanted, the main reason is what? He wanted Scott to check whether whatever he has heard in his machine is right or not, right? But this option is better than the other three. So we will choose this. Ultimately, uh, this was the main reason for which Scott went there, isn't it? To tend the wound. Coming to the long answer type questions, question number seven. With reference to the story, the sound machine, explain what made the doctor intrigued and inquisitive. Now, instead of uh, mentioning the whole answer over here, I will tell you 
I will explain you the portion from the book, from the textbook, where you can find this answer. With reference to the story, the sound machine explain what the do what made the doctor intrigued and inquisitive. You remember that the doctor visited Klausner to check his throat problem. This is there in the first two pages. We will move to page number three, that is 101 in the book. In the book 101, we will move to the page, to that page. Now we see the doctor went to the door, turned and said, well, I won't disturb you. Glad your throat's not worrying you anymore. But he kept standing there, looking at the box, intrigued by the remarkable complexity of its inside, curious to know what this strange patient of his was up to. What's it really for? He asked. You made me inquisitive. So intrigued and inquisitive, both words you found in this paragraph. Now, what will you write? What will be the answer? What made him intrigued? First point. There are four marks for each question. So first point is the box, the uh, that coffin, the, uh, the coffin-like box made him intrigued and inquisitive. He was, uh, he saw that there are a lot of uh, complicated uh, wires over there, knobs over there and Klosner was deeply, was very much interested in working with that machine. He was not in the house, he was not worried about his health, he was busy working on it. He, he, it was uh, something that made him, made the doctor very inquisitive to know what that machine actually is and why Klosner was busy with it. All right, so this will fetch you uh, three marks and you can add, you will move to the previous page and then you will add the details of the box also as it is already given in the first page. See, the uh, against, uh, in that workbench uh, in his outhouse or in that, in that shed, what was there? It was, there were a number of things in the long wooden workbench. There was littering of wires and batteries and small sharp tools. And there was also a black box about three feet long, the shape of a child's coffin. Okay, so in the first page, the details of the box is given, which is very intriguing and which is, uh, which is something that interested the doctor a lot. Okay, and rest of it you will get over here itself. All right, that's all you can write in this question. Four marks only, give uh, the, uh, the name of the thing, okay, and the details of the box. And also mention that uh, Klosner was not interested in chatting with the doctor, neither was he interested in um, talking about his health or he was, when the doctor asked him, do you want me to check once how you are, how your throat condition is, he was not even bothered about that. So that made the doctor very much interested. <coughs> this is question number eight. What explanation did the strange patient offer to satisfy the curious mind of the doctor? So there is something that Klosner replied. First question is what? What made the doctor intrigued? What made the doctor interested in the first case that we have said? Now the question is, what explanation did he provide? Now for this, you have a lot of material to write. In the same page, 101. Come to that and come to the end of that page. See, uh, when speaking very roughly, any note so high that it has more than 15,000 vibrations a second, we can't hear it. Dogs have better ears than us. You know you can buy your whistle whose note is so high pitch that you can't hear it at all. But a dog can hear it. So first, uh, Klosner decides what to explain, how to explain the whole matter to <coughs> the doctor. And then he said that there are certain sounds that are created, but that are inaudible to human ear because human beings can hear only 15,000 vibrations. So above that, people are unable to hear that sound. But obviously, these sounds are created because we obviously know that there is a whistle which only dogs can hear, that whistle sound, and human beings cannot. He gives this example to explain uh, the doctor. Then he says, because there are a large number of uh, notes or, or sounds that are created inaudible to us, there can be some music, some rhythm that is created somewhere and <clears throat> we are completely unaware of it. That made Klausner very much interested in knowing what those sounds actually were, who were the animals or, or whatever it is for making those sounds. Okay. Now you will also have to, now two marks over, now you see that now you move to the next page that is 103. Okay, some time ago, over here, some time ago, Klausner had invented a simple instrument. Okay, Klausner had invented a simple instrument 
that proved to him the existence of many odd inaudible sounds. He, there was a dial which moved and gave him the proof that there are certain sounds that are created around him. However, he could not hear it because that was not a very complicated machine that could only record the sounds, the inaudible sounds created around us, above 15,000 vibrations. So he now decided to make another instrument so that the same amount, so that same sounds which are created would be reduced to some lower uh, vibrations and then it would be audible to human ear. That means Klosner would be able to hear the sounds in that uh, earphone. All right. So that's how Klosner gave a detailed account of what his instrument was and uh, what he was actually doing in that shed. All right. I hope this is clear. Now we'll move to question number nine. How does this story express the concern for nature? Now we will move to, I have already told you that it is better that we follow Xavier Pinto and P.S. Ladika's uh, workbook. There are certain notes also which are beneficial. See, concern for nature already, the note is given over here. I'll read and explain accordingly. You can shorten it. There is a lot written over here. You can reduce it. Let's read. The sound machine deals subtly with the theme of nature. Klosner, an amateur scientist, was obsessed with sounds in nature. He wanted to capture those sounds which are either high-pitched or low-pitched and inaudible to human ear. Therefore, he invented a sound machine to capture those sounds, despite being aware of the fact that these sounds could make him mad with excitement. In the process of capturing those sounds, he tested his theory on plants. By doing so, he heard the shrieking, frightening cry of plants when they were cut. He felt that plants too undergo pain and scream when they are hurt. Klosner, being a scientist and sensitive man, could feel the painful cry of the plants. On the other hand, his neighbor, Mrs. Saunders and Dr. Scott, could not hear any such sound. It is suggestive of the apathetic attitude most of the people have towards nature. Last two lines are very important. But yes, uh, the main matter that we will start our answer with, that is what? That Klosner invented one instrument with which he could hear the apparently inaudible sounds around us. He realized that plants also make a strange kind of sound when a flower is plucked from it or a lawnmower mows the grass or cuts the wheat, okay, or an, uh, an axe hits the tree trunk. Okay, he sensitized towards nature. He realizes that the tree can also feel the pain because it is also life. It is something similar to cutting off a portion of the hand from the wrist. Okay, as he explains to Saunders, it is also similar to somebody hacking off the leg of a person while he cannot move from his place, similar to the tree trunk. All right, so these show that uh, being a sensitive man, Klosner is able to relate to the pain or the or any kind of emotion of that tree or the plant. However, uh, Mrs. Saunders and Dr. Scott, they, these sounds are inaudible to them, which shows that they are apathetic towards the uh, pain or any kind of emotion of the other living beings. All right, this will fetch you already two and a half mark. Now see, let's read the next paragraph. <coughs> Klosner's concern for nature is reflected in the incident when, after hitting the trunk of the tree with an axe, he felt sorry and apologized to the tree. He even tried to press the edges of the gash to close the wound. After inviting Dr. Scott, he sat down disturbed, imagining what sort of noise would be created. If 500 wheat plants were to be cut simultaneously, he felt that after hearing such a terrible sound, he would not be able to eat bread anymore. These examples will fetch you marks. That he'll not go to the wheat field, he'll not go to the place where lawnmower is mowing the grass because he cannot uh, listen to that extreme sound of pain in his earphone. After giving another blow to the tree trunk, Klosner ordered Dr. Scott to stitch the wound and apply iodine because he feels that we would also have felt the same kind of pain when somebody, uh, when there is such a wound on our leg, just like the tree trunk has the cash. Alright, so he asked the doctor to paint it with iodine. This story is a grim reminder to all, the, this is the uh, concluding line that we will add, not to cut plants and trees indiscriminately. Human beings are ignoring the nature's sound, which is giving out through a number of natural calamities as a warning. You can also write that. 
that um, there are there are certain natural calamities and this sound machine is actually talking about those things that is happening around us which we are we, we are not worried about we are not bothered about so it is a high time for all human beings to listen to the sound of nature and uh, with or without the help of such a sound machine to listen to the inner voice of ours so that we are sensitized towards nature at least now <clears throat> So this is question number nine. I hope this is clear to you. Next, we move to question number 10. Explain the theme of appearance versus reality in the story, The Sound Machine. Very sorry. So explain the theme of appearance versus reality in the story, The Sound Machine. This is again present in the same workbook. You can write it from here. Appearance versus reality is the main theme that runs throughout the story. Klosna, the protagonist of the story, was obsessed with sounds. He believed that there are a number of high-pitched sounds that are inaudible to human ear, which means that is apparently not uh, present around us. Like uh, Dr. Scott and Mrs. Saunders, they do not even realize that there are so many sounds around us, which means they are not present. However, according this is the appearance, that they believe that it is not present. However, this is present, it is just inaudible to us according to Klosner's claim. <clears throat> to capture those sounds which are inaudible to human ear, Klosner worked for hours to invent a sound machine. He wished to hear the sounds made by the fly, bat, innumerable other creatures. And uh, so this suggests that Klosner was sure that his machine was capable of recording those sounds. Klosner took the machine in his garden to test his theory, but he was afraid that his machine might not work and what would happen if it had worked. The moment his neighbor Mrs. Saunders cut a yellow rose, Klosner actually heard it. But when she asked, when he tried to explain it to Mrs. Saunders, he ra she rather felt that the person, his na her neighbor was mad and did not even realize that whatever he was saying was actually correct. Next, uh, so Klosner himself doubted <coughs> his theory because in fact now he realized that it was same with the roses and he had been wrong in calling it to be a cry of pain because he could hear the sounds but he did not know the meaning of the sounds behind it. He did not know whether this was a cry of pain or whether it was a cry of shock or any other emotion it was expressing. He was unaware of that. It appeared to be a sound of pain but the reality may be something different because he still does not have the access the meaning of those sounds. Second point done. Next. Further in the story, he took his sound machine to a park. <coughs> he first tried to convince himself of the truth of his, th his theory. He hit the trunk of the tree with an axe and heard a shrieking sound. He called Dr. Scott to prove his theory. When Klosner hit the trunk of the tree for the second time, a branch of the tree fell on his machine and smashed it. He demanded from Dr. Scott if he had heard any sound when the axe struck the tree. Dr. Scott denied having heard any sound because the tree had already started breaking and crashing on the machine and he was so afraid that he opened the earphone immediately and ran. So he had not, he, he possibly had no clue whether he had actually heard anything or not. This is suggestive of the fact that Klosner was not able to prove whether it was appearing to be the, 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 the uh, to be uh, a successful <coughs> invention or not that was still uh, we, are, we are still not sure about that because it is only Klosner who hears it so we do not know whether it is his sensitive mind that hears it that was just an appearance or it was actually a reality that nobody else had access to all right so finally there are different perceptions of reality and every person behaves accordingly according to his own thinking so uh, uh, here we can say that Klosner, it may be possible this is an open-minded story it may be possible that he was successful or he was not successful because we get no other proof no other person hears the same sound that Klosner hears okay we do not know whether he was too sensitive to nature it was his mind that was speaking or really or, or really he heard the sounds and um, very sadly nobody else could hear it all right, so four marks question. This is enough that you will write. And that's all for today. So I hope you liked the video and you have benefited from it as it is a combination of different types of important questions from the sound machine. 
we will come back with more questions more questions from other chapters also that's all hope you have a nice day bye bye everybody